Hello everyone and welcome back to the Contested Realm. My name is Jesse Muleman Marshall and it's great to be here today with Drew from On The Play. How are you, Drew? I'm great. How are you, Jesse? I'm very well. And yeah. today we're going to be chatting about your upcoming event, March of the Mortals. Can you tell us a bit more about March of the Mortals? Yeah, so March of the Mortals is a uh, constructed, trying to make it as big as possible, constructed tournament that is in Denton, Texas on March 16th, 2024. Um, and I'm trying to make it as big as possible, like I said, and it's it's going to be completely live stream. So I'm doing a lot of production elements to make it feel, um, make, make people that aren't there feel as close as possible to the game um, like they were there. So um, we're doing a lot of like player interviews. I'll be in a studio booth with some other commentators from the sorcery community uh, talking about the gameplay that's actually happening as everyone's watching it. Um, and we have a lot of little uh, fun surprises for players throughout the tournament. And so, yeah, we're trying to make it as big as possible. And it's turning out great. We've had uh, great feedback so far. And it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I love the community. I think, Drew, anyone who hasn't had a chance to see yet, your promotional video that you shot for the event was outstanding. And <laughs> I'd encourage everyone to go and have a look at it because when Drew talks about having live streaming of the event, if it's anything of that caliber uh, in terms of your video production skills and everything else, it's going to be an awesome event to watch. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's really, really cool to see. Uh, and Drew, this event, people can register and there's an early bird registration, I believe, where they'll get a t-shirt. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. If, if you register, um, which it's on the Sorcery Play Network, um, and if you just search March of the Mortals, um, if you register before February 24th, um, you'll receive a free uh, March of the Mortals shirt upon entry to the event. You'll already receive a March of the Mortals play mat. So if you are traveling and you're planning on taking a plane, you don't have to bring your play mat if you would, don't want to. Um, you will be provided one when you do uh, enter the tournament. Along with some and other well, surprises, that's... but we're I'm holding that, uh, you know, in, in the oh, pocket. Oh, no, keep some secrets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> As you've seen with uh, Simon and Eric, there's there's plenty of appetite for keeping a few things secret in sorcery, and I think with things that have come out through the booster boxes like that in the past, people have certainly enjoyed a bit of a surprise. Uh, so when we're looking at these play mats, firstly, are they going to be sorcery play mats? So as in, will they have the grid on them for people to play? Yes, they will. Um, these were, uh, you know, designed so, by me, designed by me in the sense that there's a couple different elements on uh, the playmat um, that is a little bit unique. I, I wanted to keep the playmat simple, but do something a little bit different um, that I haven't really seen yet, at least printed. So um, they'll have little threshold dice areas. So for newer players and experienced players that um, want to keep track of their threshold. There's little designated areas similar to how we have, you know, the card squares or rectangles on our mats now. So um, there's yep. a couple design elements that I'm doing to it that um, I've been getting feedback from the community. I do have a March of the Mortals Discord, so I'm very open with the community asking for their feedback because I, I want this to be, as much as I'm putting this event on, I really want, you know, the community to feel as a part of it as possible. So I'm very, you know, eager to get everyone's feedback and make sure that it's a positive experience for everybody. Uh, that's awesome to hear. And Drew, the other thing that we have to mention before we dive into a bit of gameplay, we are going to have a, a match with my Wave Shaper deck against Drew's Pathfinder, which should be a bit exciting. We'll continue chatting about the event. But um, before we dive into that, do you just want to tell us a little bit about the original art as well that's going to be involved in the prizes? Yes, so um, I have been working with Truett Parrish, uh, one of the sorcery artists, as you know. Um, he is by far my favorite artist. There's something about his paint style uh, that I just absolutely love. And it was kind of a dream of mine to work with him, even to get an email back from him. Um, and mm. so a while ago, I reached out to him and I told him the concept of March of the Mortals and what I wanted to do. And I wanted a piece specifically commissioned for the event. I didn't want something that already existed. I, I wanted a one of one piece that nobody could get. So um, I reached out to Truett, told him the idea, told him the concept. He loved it. And we communicated back and forth. He's given some amazing um, sketches 
to me so far. And we've been kind of talking about tweaks here and there. And we've kind of settled on one that we both absolutely love. And he's working on the master sketch as we speak. And um, in addition to that, you know, kind of giving a little bit about what I'm doing as well is that I don't want to just hand the art piece to the winner. I, I want it to be a little bit more than that. So I've been working with Truett to capture the start, the the very first time that I messaged him and the first sketches that he worked on all the way till he yep. digitalizes the piece for me and sends oh, that wow. over. So he's going to be capturing that process. Um, and so I'm going to be documenting that in, in a lot of pictures and a lot of imagery and stuff like that. Um, that I'll be giving to the winner as well. So they feel that they've seen the beginning of the piece, even some of the sketches that didn't even make it, um, that the that the winner will get all of those. So um, it's something that was really important to me because, like I said, I, I wanted the community to feel much more involved than just showing up, winning, and leaving with a prize. Um, so I wanted to be a more of an experience. Well, that is really, really awesome. And I know yeah. that a lot of people who love sorcery love the hand-painted art aspect of it and to be able to tap into that by getting one of the sorcery artists as you say true parish who does some beautiful pieces mm -hmm. uh, to do an original piece as a prize for your tournament i think it's a brilliant idea yeah. uh, so i'm just gonna duck across now to Ooh. top simulator view Ooh. where we've got drew and my game set up and we're gonna shuffle up and draw some hands and while we make some mulligan decisions here drew uh, do you want to just tell me a little bit about the format of the event as well yeah, um, it's going to be a best of the entire oh, event. Oh, you can go first, by the way. Sorry oh, to okay. interrupt you there. <laughs> oh, okay. You're on the um, play. The, Has to be, right? Yeah, right. Uh, the entire <laughs> event is going to be a best of one. It's six rounds of Swiss that will then be cut to a um, uh, playoff, a top eight uh, playoff single elimination uh, for the grand prize. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so six rounds of Swiss constructed, yep. cutting to a top eight playoff, and will it all all be best of one all the way through the top eight as well? Yes, it will. Yep. Yep. For time's cool. sake, because for March of the Mortals uh, for 2024 at least, um, we it's just from like a scheduling standpoint, it was a lot easier for us to just make it in a one day event. We didn't have as much leeway time for the announcement um, to make it hmm. a full weekend. 2025, we're already planning for that, and um, this that will be a a, a larger um, tournament, meaning over the weekend and everything like that, um, instead mm -hmm. of just a one day thing. So for time's sake, we kept everything to best of one for 2024. Awesome. Uh, so I am good now. I've mulliganed one side and one spell, uh, awesome. and as you finish your mulligans. Uh, yeah. And as, as you're taking your turn, feel free to interrupt yourself and tell me about your plays as we go through. But I'd, I'm sure. interested to hear a bit as well about your um, future plans with March of the Mortals. So you mentioned Absolutely. 2025, and I think the winner gets to come back. So yeah, That's take correct. your turn and then uh, tell me a bit about that. Sounds great. I'll start us off with a Rift Valley, and then I'll pass turn. Cool. Uh, I'll draw a spell, play a Spring River. Have a look at the top card. And I'll put that on the bottom. And pass to you. Sounds great. I'll draw so the first place player at March of the Mortals gets to come back in 2025 and defend their title, don't they? So you're planning to run it again. As you said, it's going to be hopefully bigger and better over a couple of days. Uh, and if the, you are the winner, you're going to get free entry to come back. Yeah, that's, that, that's correct. And I'll pass turn. Um, yeah, the uh, winner uh, for this year's of March of the Mortals, um, in addition to everything else that you get, you do get a ticket back to uh, the 2025 March of the Mortals, which, again, will be um, multiple days. So we're going to have a uh, draft. I'll you. I'll ha we'll have a draft on one of the days, um, and uh, we're going to be just doing multiple events um, throughout the um, weekend instead of a one-day sort of situation so um yeah past turn oh, very sorry cool. don't mean to do that that's all right i'll draw up and we'll go with a i think i think i drew the the worst cards against water pretty pretty sure about that yeah 
Uh, oh, I don't think I need to waste that. I think I want... Um, I saw nothing, Jesse. Don't worry. I saw nothing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to waste the mana and just play this here. And past you. Little turtle never hurt anybody. That's right. So an interesting matchup here as well, Pathfinder, I know, to segue off March the Mortals temporarily, uh, Pathfinder is something that you very much enjoy playing, the the card advantage from getting all of these sites. Um, do you want to talk yes. us through what this deck's trying to do? Yeah, you know, card advantage, um, aggro, aggression, and um, a lot of sneaky um, attacks. Mm -hmm. One of the things that hopefully I can show off today is that a lot of the damage that um, is accounted for that you see on the board isn't necessarily uh, what's going to be striking you each turn. So I, I try to hopefully can sneak in some damage that you may not expect here and there. Um, but I will not pay for the village's um, genesis ability, yep. and I'll, I'll swing. I'll swing at your turtle, and then okay, uh, for war. Let's see. I'll play a kobold, and then I'll pass turn and hmm. strike the turtles. No worries. Your turn, good sir. Uh, I'll draw a sash this time. I'll play a floodplain here, flood the free city. I'll riptide the boss troll in and attack it with the free city. Um, good play. And then I'll pass the turn to you. This is an interesting spot uh, that you put me in because since you've built out here, allowing me to go up here, I know pretty much I can guarantee my sixth site, which may be more beneficial for me than staying away from you. So that's an interesting play on 14. Hmm. Yeah, since and I... that's one of the key tensions against Pathfinder, isn't it? Um, as the opposite player, wanting to yeah. try and block off those paths, uh, but then as the Pathfinder player wanting to go where you want to go as well. Exactly. It's a really good point, yeah. Um, since I don't have to make the decision exactly right now, I think I'll start off yeah. by swinging for two. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and take a look at the site. And this is another benefit with Pathfinder is I get to look at it first. Um, so that mm. isn't very advantageous for me in a lot of ways for putting this up here, but... Let's see, you're running air water, so, and you're only on one air, so if you did draw into like a cloud city or something, you wouldn't be able to move it, so I'd still have the opportunity to get my six. And another thing about this deck, um, it really survives off of six mana. I, I really, honestly, five, but I have a couple finishers that could, you know, might need six mana, but um, yeah, it can definitely survive off of five, and that is very intentional, but I'm I think this is a very big play here on deciding where I want to go, mm -hmm. but we'll we'll risk it and we'll move up here. And then for four, I'll come in with my cavalry and I'll swing at your site for three. All right. I'll pass That'll... turn and the kobolds will strike the cavalry. Oh, good. We'll untap and play... Oh, sorry, and draw a spell. All right, that's it's an interesting spot for me too. So because Drew's built off to the side with the Pathfinder, and I've got two sites on this side of my board which are not water sites, so I have the option to try and build up this right-hand side of the board and effectively concede this side of the board to Drew for now. Playing here this turn is not necessarily advantageous for me because Drew's going to play to 16 anyway and I can go to 17 next turn if I want. It also means that the Kobolds and the free and the Cavalry have to stay where they are or go into the Free City as opposed to being able to come down here if that becomes relevant. Um, the question is whether going up here is relevant for me or whether taking or building my body of water around here is relevant. So I'm going to start off by flooding the uh, Free City as well uh, this turn and then just have a think about how I want to use these resources. Um, so I have the option to do this on the Petrosian Cavalry, but that would require me to use the Wave Shaper's ability, uh, which also I could use the Wave Shaper's ability just to deal with the minions for now. Um, I 
think I do want to play a site though. The problem is my current mana on four, going up to five, is not terribly efficient with the way that my hand is. But I'm going to try and have to build up mana at some point. So I can... I don't think I want to make a... Hmm. Yeah, the thing is, I don't think I want to make a aggressive play just yet. And I think perhaps, as weird as it is, slowing down my development to try and... How many cards in hand for Drew? Four. Yeah, this is the thing against Pathfinder. The, the threats just keep coming. So I think I am going to flood this site until I do so again. And um, tap down those guys with the Wave Shaper's ability. And then I'm going to drown the Petrosian Cavalry and pass the turn to you. And this flood goes away. Sounds good. So again, there, Drew, getting up to five cards in hand now. Yeah. But what we're hoping here is that the Kobolds have to strike themselves. I mean, with five cards in hand and so much mana, six mana now, uh, Drew's going to presumably be able to play something there to help the Kobolds survive, but we'll see. Oh, the Kobolds are tapped too. Uh, yes, they are. Thank you. That's all right. I'm going to play a Manticore. I'm just really oh, deciding... The big Manticore. If I want the Kobolds to survive or not. If I do, that means I can only play them here. And this is what I was worried about with the Gnome Hollows here. Um, hmm. yeah, I could keep them here, which keep, gives me distance on you. And I definitely hmm. like that. So I can swing here. The only problem is that I'm giving up the kobolds, but if you're and you're on four mana, you have a sight in hand. I'm assuming that you want to put that site down at some point relatively soon. So, um, yeah, this is, this is a very interesting turn. Do I want to keep it here and keep this up? I, I think that's probably the safest route to go. So I'll go ahead and pass turn and uh, strike uh, my Manticore from the uh, Kobolds. Okay, awesome. I'll untap and draw a spell this turn. I'll tap the Wave Shaper to play a Tadpole Pool here. So we get three Submerged Frogs. And for what it's worth, in terms of your two options there, you chose the one that I wanted you to do least, so that's always good, right? <laughs> <laughs> I figured. I, I have to take that into consideration, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then for my five mana, all right, what am I going to do? I'm going to flood the free city. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, Riptide the some Kobolds onto the Free City and attack them. So that's two mana. And I'm going to play an Aquarine Core. So I go up to six. And then I'll play a Tufted Turtles here. And pass the turn to you. Sounds great. So this is a super interesting game. I mean, I think this goes to show with Wave Shaper and Pathfinder, two uh, avatars that operate on slightly different axes to some others you might see. It creates some super interesting board states. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, this is this is kind of what I was hoping to show off, something similar to this. So the game plan kind of changed a little bit with this Tufted Turtles. I have a couple different options, but I think this is probably, probably my best option. So I'm going to actually back away from you for a second because I liked that line of sight but I'm going to give it up um, so that I can kill the tufted turtles since these mm -hmm. all shoot one at a time and then kind of what I was talking about at the beginning is that oh, this I, is like, still flooded. Sorry. I like to have yep. that sneaky attack where the mm. opponent on their turn is not accounting for specific damage to where I can then swing for a healthy six here um, mm -hmm. yeah and so nice. And I think I'll actually put that here instead to give myself more of an advantage. And then I will pass turn. All right. So yeah, it's, it, it's it hurts because I think one of the best things with Wave Shaper is 
like f- doing that funnel effect where you're m- forcing your opponent to like have very limited options as to what they can attack to so you can use the wave shaper's ability as best as you can so doing this is it's nice to get that one damage in but you could lock that down for the rest of the game so it's it's, it's tricky yeah so i think this turn i want to draw a spell because my plan is to uh lock down the manticore makes sense um but oh and the manticore is untapped by the way because the manticore is untapped at the end of turn yeah yeah um All right, so I think we're going to play. Hmm. Both interesting options. We'll bring the frogs up here um and it's kind of yeah so the, the issue with this turn with what i've drawn is that i can tap down the manticore but it's hard for me to progress where i want to take my game from here given the particularities of the minions that i have in hand um which leaves me in a bit of an interesting spot. I think I'll tap down the Manticore and then play a pirate ship here and pass the turn to you. Spell for turn. Very, very interesting. I'll start by swinging here for two. Uh. All right, I'll defend. I'll firebolt for the rest. <laughs> hmm. I think I'll start to back up. Doesn't really feel good, but I'll play that there and then I'll pass turn. Sorry for mm-hmm. the lack of communication on that play. No, that's all right. It's interesting. Root Spider not being able to go underground very easily it doesn't happen all that often. And then this would untap. Um, yes. Of, yeah. Yes, that's right. Too bad that's not like uh, when it happens on cast. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> It'd be specifically very bad for me right now. <laughs> um, I'll draw a sight. And play a lighthouse here. Uh, so I go up to seven mana. That's tab so uh, I'll polymorph the panorama mantic- manticore. Mm-hmm. Turn it into a frog. And then I'll play an Anui Undyne uh, here. And pass to you. And she's currently a what right now? She's three, four, uh, five. five. Okay. Yeah, six on my turn if I want, but five on your turn. Okay. Spell for turn. Hmm. Can I take back that card that I bottomed at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're on the surface, right? 
Um, yes. Uh, for for Undyne? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll... Oh, uh, man. Don't want to get that out of the way. This is a wild play, too. <laughs> so many wild plays in this matchup. It really is. It really, really Cards is. Cards that just work differently to what you expect. Right? Hmm. I usually never use this. Uh, I guess I'll start by... I'll swing at this site for two. Let's see what you do. Sure, I'll, I'll block with that and wait. Okay. Um, and she's a five, correct? Yep. Okay, so move here, and I'll firebolt again. <laughs> yep. Firebolt's getting it done. Yeah, sometimes they have to, you know? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Man, it, this is that funneling effect that I just... <laughs> it's really difficult against... Um, I'll pass turn against Wave Shaper. I, I bottomed an Earthquake, which in this matchup mm -hmm. makes sense, but when you're able to do something like this with a free city right in the central zone or area like this, it's Earthquake would be fantastic. Yeah, it can be huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll draw a spell, and I'll start off with an Unland Eel, and... Um, What if the other deal? Maybe here, actually. And then I'll tap to draw a site and pass to you. This is no longer flooded, right? This this doesn't need to be. It's there? days flooded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's, it's oh, days until flooded until so I do again. it again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And you said pass turn, right? Yes, pass turn. Okay, sweet. I don't know why I felt like I knew I was going to get this card. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Dum -de -dum -dum -dum. I'll swing at this site. Um, shot. Sure. Oh, no, actually. Sorry, I'll, I'll block with a frog. Okay. So there, therefore. The sacrificial frogs? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. I'll play a bosky boy here, and then I'll pass turn. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll untap and draw a spell. This is the part for me that I don't really like happening is where I don't have the card advantage. I, I always feel completely protected if I have more cards in hand than you. Yes. I feel really yes. vulnerable when I don't. That was what I was hoping might end up happening. Yeah, It's that funnel that effect, it man. It's, once you can do that and it forces me to just put things out to try to get chip damage on you, it's really strong. Yeah, it's where you want to be, where I want to be. Um, all right, I'll leave that card on top. Uh, I'll move in and attack your frog. He's not. He's not hurting anybody. He's just hanging out. <laughs> now he's never going to hurt anyone again. <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> and I'll. Um, hmm. Bosk troll, eh? Uh, I'll let the Bosk troll... Nah, I'm going to lie about the Bosk troll. Okay. Yeah, you're up. Sounds good. Draw a spell. I will swing here for one. <laughs> Is my root spider's untapped, correct? Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll swing at the site. I'll defend. Okay. And then I'll pass turn. Cool. Untap. Draw a spell. Um, I'll submerge the root spider. I'll play a... Pirate ship here. 
I'll move up this frog and I'll draw a slash and pass to you. Sounds good. Spell for turn. More interesting plays. You are at eight. eight. Unfortunately. Uh, yep. I'll move here. Man, I don't like that play. Very interesting. Holy ground. Gain mm -hmm. some life. I wish I could. Yep. <laughs> and At least it I didn't gain me some life, I guess. Truth. Very, very true. Um, let's see here. I guess I'll pass turn. Cool, cool. Untap. Sorry for the and slow play there. No, no problem at all. Lots to think about. Uh, and I'll draw a spell. I'll play a river here. And just have a look at the top card. I'll leave that where it is. I'll attack here for five. Um... I'll, oh, that's interesting, um, I'll move the unlit eel up, I'll move the frog here, and I'll play a giant shark here, and pass T. Sounds good. Spell for turn. Perfect. Oof. Ooh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shots that, controlling. <laughs> that would have been funny. <clears throat> Let's see. This is very scary. I should have gotten rid of the ghost ship when I could have, and now I'm regretting it. Uh, Very unfortunate. Um, man, oh man. What a bummer play. I'll flame wave from here, in this direction. Uh -huh. Killing the shark. So I take three, you take and three. the shark and the eel and the frog die. Yeah, ghost ship survives. <clears throat> and you take one or no no i take zero none. yeah yeah and then i will pass turn unfortunately all right all i could have done the that. flame wave last turn when you were here but i wanted to hold it because mm. i figured you were gonna have another i did not necessarily the giant shark but i wanted to do more than just you know more than just, just one the for one. Ship. i got greedy yeah uh i'll tap the pirate ship at uh, sorry attack for five oh, okay you can just tap it. You and don't have then, to attack me if you don't want to. And, <laughs> and then I'll play a pirate ship here. And pass to you. Sounds good. Oh, and uh, sorry, tap to... I'll actually tap to... F flood this turn. Doesn't really give me that much flexibility, I don't think. I think I'd rather tap to draw a site. Yeah, your turn. Okay. Spell for turn. Um, for five, I'll play this here. And then I'll just play this on the surface here, obviously. I'll move over and then I'll pass turn. Hmm. I'll untap. Um... Draw a spell. Hmm. So 
So I've got my ability, which is helpful on the Manticore, but then I'm a little bit stranded with the ye olde pirate ship, but I think that's still okay for me. So I attack. I have to tap this to tap down the Manticore and flood that side. Oh, that's not great, is it? Getting no damage in this turn. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'll fl tap there, flood that. Uh, attack the Root Spider. Move here. And then pass to you. Spell for turn. Oh, sorry. I'll play the play the narcotic manuscript on myself okay. and pass to you. Mm. I will blow up the Vesuvius. <laughs> I'm dealing three here. I'll get a token. Yep. Mm -hmm. There. And then for four, I'll come in and then I'll swing at this ghost ship. Uh, sure. Yep. So we tried. Mm -hmm. All good. Done. And... Let me think here. Yeah, I'll pass turn. I'll untap and draw a spell. Uh, I will tap the wave shaper to flood this site. Oh, this one's gone. Um, attack you here and then grapple shot you and then pass to you that was very nice let's see here i'll swing here for five yep I'll move here. This might be crazy. I don't... Hmm. Because you've just shown a grapple shot, so I have to assume you have another one, and that would definitely kill me this turn. Or next turn. Hmm. I have one potential, well, I have two potential outs here. Let's, this might be crazy for people that are watching this, but I'm going to earthquake here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, ooh, I don't know, that's kind of scary. Hmm, I could earthquake here and pull you farther away. Maybe that's the better option. I don't. There's so many options, Jesse. What do I do? Tell me what. Just <laughs> tell me what's in your hand. That'd be easier. About that. Um, it would maybe be. I'll. Maybe I'll just. I, I think kind of what I'm playing for now is that this final card is potentially a, um, a grapple shot. But if you played like Ice Lance or something, then you could just move here and kill me here. So. I want to protect the grapple shot. I think I'm more afraid of the grapple shot than I am the ice lance. These are some decisions here. If I get this over here, you could just grapple shot onto this and then strike me here. So I guess probably earthquaking here to get myself as far away as possible from you. Mm. And then... Put myself in the way because now with the new projectile rules but if you had like a 
if you had like a rip a rip or not a, a rip tide you could pull yourself over maybe i'll i don't know if there's a correct answer here jesse i'm just, I'm just a, it's a tough one it is a I'm tough thinking, one i'm looking at it and i'm thinking about it what's the best defensive play here it's not easy yeah it's not um yeah and then if i switched these two here that could be a better option or I kept this like this. Oops. I guess I'll just keep it like this. I'll pass turn and then the Manticore um, <laughs> untaps due to its ability. All right. Okay. One tap. Draw a spell. And that was a good one off the top. Ah, oh, man. Um, wow. <laughs> lucky lightning bolt. So because ignoring that, though, this, it was super, super interesting because there was, considering how few cards there are on the board, like how few minions are units, mm -hmm. um, it was so interesting because I had an undertow in hand, right? Okay. So uh, I can move my pirate ship around by playing the undertow or move your magical out of the way. Mm -hmm. But then I also have a grapple shot. I can't grapple shot onto the holy ground unless okay. I flood it which also requires tapping the wave shaper. Hmm. So it was very, basically I had to tap, I had to be able to move my pirate ship off this site onto this water site yep. so that I could then tap the wave shaper to flood the holy ground. Hmm. But then when your manticore was in the way, I couldn't grapple shot through. Yeah. Man, um, that lightning bolt. That was yeah. great. That was awesome. Whoa, what a game. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of bottomed out just, there. Uh, Oh, it was it was so much pressure early and so much card advantage, but then yeah, that that little whirlpool in the corner managed to buy me enough time. Yep. For the big minions to come online. Just want to say again, thank you so much for what was an amazing game showcasing two really different uh, avatars that don't necessarily see a lot of airtime, but are super fun. Um, and just to, to wrap up for our viewers, March of the Mortals. Um, how can they register? Uh, when's it on? And why should they come? Just in one minute. Uh, Sorcery Play Network, search March of the Mortals, March 16th, 2024. It's in Denton, Texas. And um, you should come to March of the Mortals because I'm trying, my intention is to make it like an event that we haven't seen yet for Sorcery in terms of uh, interaction, um, prize support, and just overall fun and community. Uh, I really want everyone to just leave there super excited to come back for March of the Mortals 2025, regardless of what place you have. So last place, I want them to be as excited as possible as if it was first place, minus the awesome prizes. But um, yeah, I, I hope everyone uh, can make it. The seats are filling up quick. So if you are wanting to uh, join, please do so. March of the Mortals, Sorcery Play Network. Well, we love that vision, Drew, and I am honestly amazed at the production value of your videos, uh, the production value you're putting into the coverage and the amazing prizes and everything else that you've arranged for this. I think it's going to be an awesome event. If I was closer by, I would 100% be there. So any of you who are in the States or who are able to, who are able to get down, uh, highly recommend it. And it looks like it's going to be an awesome day. Thanks for taking the time to chat and uh, we'll see you next time. Yep. See you next time. Thank you.